You, uh, let's do some Tai Chi. Let's break down. <clears throat> let's start in the center. So allow your feet to touch. <clears throat> Bring your head top up to the highest point. Make a slight adjustment. Let's see if that's any better. So from the center, pull the head top up. Relax your shoulders. <clears throat> Sink your hips into the ground. Take a deep breath. Bring your hands together at the center. And then go through. Every week we do the same. We talk about the same things because they're the most important. Pulling the head top all the way up. Relaxing the brow. <clears throat> Open the vision. Open the nostrils. Activate the corners of the mouth. The chin is tucked. Shoulders are rolled back. The chest is not pushing forward and not sunk in. <clears throat> we may say that it feels hollow. Use your center, so feel the internal muscles in the abdominal area supporting your whole torso so that you can relax your back and allow it to open and expand. The tailbone hiding so there's no upward movement in the lower spine. It's all going downwards. Fold the insides of the hips. The knees have a bend in them. Flex your ankles. <clears throat> Strengthen your ankles. Pull the outside edges of the feet in. Grip your toes and then release the last two toes. The two toes out on the end. Let those relax. When we're breathing, we're lifting the base of the torso. <clears throat> By the way, while we're here, when I say we're lifting the base of the torso, we're lifting the pelvic floor, this, this is, uh, you can think of the external muscles, but this is internal. So, uh, especially for men's health issues, somebody asked this week about this, this process of when we're breathing, we're pulling up on the inside uh, very briefly. There's a, a light flexion of the anus, we're pulling up on the, the perineum at the base between. Again, light flexion, like flexing very lightly. The uh, genitals, the lower abs, and if you can control your tailbone, <clears throat> activating that as well. I've described it before as the J shape. So starting from about the base of your ribs, going all the way down and connecting up just at the <clears throat> base of the tailbone. <clears throat> so lifting that while you're breathing, Tai Chi principle. Let's actually do some breathing. Grip the ground. We're just going to start with a very basic. So make it a stretch. Reach your arms out to the side, relaxing at the base. Go at your own pace and at the top, stretch your whole body. While you're doing this Qigong, <clears throat> what makes a Qigong, by the way? We would just be doing exercise if we didn't have an intention in our mind. So one of the things that separates Qigong from a regular exercise is we have something in mind. And we start this class practicing Qigong to gather a bunch of energy before we work out. <clears throat> and this too is a Tai Chi principle. Part of studying Tai Chi as Americans is learning <clears throat> about Chinese culture, learning about historical culture. And in other cultures, in the Russian culture, for instance, they have a, a sort of <clears throat> superstition before you travel, 
you sit. It's not like to have a meal or conversation. I refer to it as a superstition. But in learning about that cultural aspect, it's a great idea. It's like doing qigong before you work out. So the intention while you're breathing. <clears throat> we can't always think ahead. Sometimes we're busy. Sometimes the immediate stressors require immediate action. We don't always take the time to take a break, to charge up before we work, or to stop and slow down before we travel. So while you're breathing, while you're doing this Qigong, <clears throat> you can do some homework for yourself ahead of time. With all of the breathing, fresh air that you're getting, you can think of this Tai Chi principle now into the future and remind yourself to slow down and take a break, to slow down and charge up before you go. Do two more. Are your feet still activated? When you finish, <clears throat> return to Tai Chi Harmony. You need to adjust your <clears throat> clothing. And then come back to the center and relax. We're going to stretch just a little bit. Lock your shoulders. Going at your own pace. Go as slow as you feel sore in your neck. Make the movement appropriate to your body and to your condition. Change directions if you haven't already. And turn the circle bigger. Remember the same breathing we just did. And this is your neck, so if there's one place that feels like it needs stretched more, you can pull on that side the other. <clears throat> when you feel good, come back to the center and do some shoulder rolls. Check to see that you have at least a half smile. That's the minimum. Change directions if you haven't already. And then alternate. Make these movements as big as you can inside of your body. Keep your spine straight. Remember the long breathing that we did and see if you can keep them relaxed. So you're making a large movement that's very relaxed. <clears throat> Come back to the center. Next, we're gonna turn around the waist so make sure that you have space around you. This one again is important, the long breathing, because we're turning our torso all through here. So my hips and my jaw facing the same direction. And see if you can <clears throat> take a deeper breath when turning. Let's do another one of these. This next one, standing on one foot, Keep your spine straight and sinking down as your arms float up. So anchor your body as much as your hands fly up. Next, let's sort of combine those two. So <clears throat> we're going to turn and reach up and over. Pat yourself back. Remember to root into that standing foot, sinking. And by the way, for these, <clears throat> we 
we should have solid control of our body. Our body shouldn't be loose and wobbling. Instead, it should be solid. The same, even when we're doing this one, don't let it be loose and wobbly. Uh, last one. <clears throat> one hand up, one hand under. Change, one hand over, one hand under. Change. back to the center, take a comfortable stance. We're going <clears> to <throat> fold, and when we fold forward, start in the center, and then reach out over each foot. Fully relax your back. Use your abs to control the movement. Remember the long breathing that we started with. When you're ready, grip the ground, use your abs, unroll your spine, inflate, breathe all the way up, <coughs> and relax. Uh, we're not going to do another one of those because we're going to do some, <coughs> there was a question last week about how do we prepare our legs for more Tai Chi, and we're going to do that today. In fact, we should actually do that right now. Uh, so. I, I had mentioned a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> maybe even months ago, about wanting to get people into this kind of deep pubu stance where we're folding this and able to get down very low. But some of us may need leg conditioning to do that. So if you can't do that, I have a technique. <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate it now uh, for people <laughs> in the live class. I know that not all of you have a wall readily available like this. So just pay attention. You can practice this later. This particular portion will be for the online class, but I'm going to use the wall. <clears throat> and the idea that I'm going to use behind it is uh, for, for getting these kind of low squats and this kind of low pubu, the key is to be able to protect your leg. <clears throat> and what I want to do is cultivate the leg strength safely. So I'm going to use a wall. And the wall is going to be my guide to make sure I keep my leg flat. So put your foot, your knee, and your hip against the wall so that your leg is planar to the wall. This other leg is going to be back at an angle. And you can move it. You have the wall here to, to check. And then doing a type of squat here. I use the stick to make sure that my knee doesn't go in front of my toe. If you watch, my knee can cantilever quite a bit. That's incorrect. So from here, I can squat, and if I feel too compromised, or I feel stretched, I can lean forward, right? Uh, I know with yoga, it's very popular to put your hands on the ground, but I've had several of my Kung Fu teachers say, don't put your hands on the ground. And two of those teachers I watched to see if they ever put their hand on the ground, and they never put their hand on the ground. <clears throat> I've seen TC actually go on the ground to teach. So yoga, same thing with the other side. Use the wall, very stable. This other leg, you can hop it out as much as you need. The wall, make sure that your hip, your knee, and your ankle staying in line, and you have something to support. You can lean against it, <sighs> get the stretch on the inside of the leg and strengthen the tendons. Try to relax your muscles on the standing side. And then if you get stuck, oh no, you just walk forward. <clears throat> Questions, thoughts, comments. Another great exercise for both strengthening the legs and also helping to correct the spine is also using the wall. So if you put your heels <clears throat> your head top and your tailbone against the wall. Grip your feet and then do squats. Keep your knees together the whole time. 
and really extend your neck on this one. Really relax the tailbone. <clears throat> because your tendons are a, a, a network, a mesh, and they're all connected. The ones from your feet are connected to the ones up top. Not directly, there's not a line that runs up there. But you have a mesh of tendons that runs up the back and where they connect, they connect to another set. <clears throat> so by, we could just do squats. Is my spine straight? I don't know. I have to look at the camera to see. Here, I know my spine is straight. So I'm conditioning my legs to bend and lift me back up, strengthening them with my spine muscles and tendons all lined up. Have you ever heard the uh, saying that says, uh, they say, practice makes perfect. And then someone else will come in and say, only perfect practice makes perfect. I don't subscribe to the second one because my teacher said, try to practice the form differently. Uh, all the time, learn a different meaning for the for the thing. You're doing the same thing, but you're doing it differently. <clears throat> so the same, this using the wall is like a perfect practice, gripping the ground, and this extends beyond Tai Chi. When I showed this to from one teacher to another, I said, "Oh, my Tai Chi teacher showed me this one." The other teacher, she said. Oh, Michael Phelps does that. Olympic swimmer. Gold, gold medal. Has eight gold medals. Something. Right? Practicing the same exercise. So, uh, my class looks simple, but it contains a lot of valuable information. So, uh, yeah, leg practicing, stretching. For the question is, how do we get that low? You always have the wall. And you can find <coughs> your limit. Anyone have questions, thoughts, comments? Let's do one more thing before we continue. And we'll do some ankle rotations. So turn your, if you see I'm locking my toe, turning my heel in a circle, change the other direction. There was a student <coughs> in Westwood who used to call this the Elvis. Okay, today we are closing in on the end of the third section, and uh, I want to work on the just the end portion of it. We're going to repeat a loop that is talking about uh, what we're working on. So let's do the whole third section, and then we're just going to zoom in on the end. So if you're new or if you're just learning the first section, the movements that are going to repeat, roll back, press, push, look, double press, split, hook, whip. Those repeat a number of times. So just hang in there, be patient. Uh, for people learning third section, start in the center. Allow your feet to connect. Do a proper calibration. So really relax your body and really extend your energy to the to the end points, power to the head top, power to the fingertips, power to the toes. Breathing deep. <clears throat> We're starting in Tai Chi 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 commencement, like a regular. And then right hand, left foot, left foot, right hand, square step, Palm press to the center, breathe deep, roll back. Join the palms, press, push, look left, glance right, double press, horizontal, split, hook, Side whip or facing east parallel, <coughs> perpendicular to east, sorry. Wild horse, one. Grip the ground. 
wild horse to grip the ground. Wild horse parts its mane. Number three, breathe deep to roll back. Join the palms, press. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal split. Hook. <coughs> Side whip. This is four corners. You yawn, Chuan So. Number one, turning. Number two, turning. Number three, turning. Number four. Chew B is left grasp the sparrow's tail, right press down, stepping forward. G on Look left, glance right, double press, <coughs> horizontal split. I'm going to move to the center. Hook. This is a corner whip. You can step larger. Snake creeping down. E long, Jin Ji Du Li, and on the other side, Jin Ji Du Li, right into the Dao Yin Ho. Repulse the monkey, one. Repulse the monkey, two. Number three, Sher Fei is diagonal flying. And in the third section, it's a left hand, left foot. Kneel at the bottom of the sea, San Kong Bay. Turn, block, punch, kick, square step. Lan, Shui. A full, Bi Bu Hua. Shang Bu Li. Change step, breathe deep to roll back. Press. Push. Look left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal. Split. <coughs> Hook. This is side whip, and we're in cloud hands. Right and left, one. Right, left, two. Right, left, three. Hook. Corner whip, you can take a regular step. Continue turning, this is snake. Flashing his tongue. <clears throat> We're going to turn 180, pull right, kick right, all three circling for a cross kick, square step, brush low, punch low, half, fold knees, change step, breathe deep to roll back. Press. Push. Left. Glance right. Double press. Horizontal split. <coughs> Hook. This is a corner whip. You can take a longer one because this is the second. Snake creeps down. And this time when we turn west, we step up to seven stars. We're going to turn 90 degrees for Schwansen. Kwahu. We're going to turn 
180 degrees from there for bilean. Step back, open the bow to shoot a tiger. Standing block punch kick, square step, line, shui. When you hear ru feng, si bi, that means our form is coming to a close. Return tiger to mountain, block, punch right, punch left. Bring everything back to the center. Okay, before we continue, does anyone have any questions while I drink my tea? It's good tea, green jasmine. Cool. All right, so <clears throat> last week we were working on the snake flashes its tongue. So let's do a little mini review of that. If I'm facing forward, we have hook, corner whip, and here <clears throat> somebody is attacking my center. So in the form for that one, uh, I, I know that I uh, put breaks in the movement sometimes so that you can see where it is. But moving continuously, if I turn and do hook and whip, that's snake flashing its tongue, right? So from here is once you turn for the whip, don't stop, continue to turn. So these arms from, from uh, hook, corner whip, continuing and they're going to make this movement. This other hand's going to come all the way around to block and this other hand's going to go all the way out. <clears throat> By the way, the, one of the next custom movements that we're looking at is Quahu and it has the same feeling. So like earlier, what we did today, this relaxing the arms, this is the same kind of, when we have a uh, snake flashing its tongue, when I hook and whip, has the same my center is driving, I'm exaggerating so that you can see, my arms are an extension of the movement that's happening in the center, right? So my center is turning and driving forward, right? So your the arms <coughs> like coming off of a flagpole. So the flagpole's turning to do its thing for snake flashing. So, so uh, if there's no questions about it, avoid make contact, advance. The next one, <clears throat> very easy, we covered it several times, second section here. Cross kick, we can re-explore questions, brush low, punch to groin, punch low, half, fold knees, what's next, change step, breathe deep, we go through the whole thing until hook, corner whip, <clears throat> and this next corner whip has the second snake creeps down from the third section. So earlier, when we do snake creeps down, we come across, and come back up, and then go into Jinji Duli, right? Some variation of that. On this next one, <clears throat> when we get to hook, corner whip, when snake creeps down the first time here, the second one steps out. So, my feet are always staying aligned to the grid. You have a question? No, okay. <clears throat> uh, so, so if I'm turning here, my feet, they're 90 degrees geometrically. Camera may make them look a little bit different. Snake creeps down, and now when I step up to seven stars, I'm still on the grid. I'm still using the linear axis lines, the <clears throat> Tai Chi ideas. So we have hook, corner whip, second, snake creeps down, and this time stepping up to seven stars. Does anyone here not remember the application to step up to seven stars from the beginning, from the first section? Let's do Tai Chi, let's do the first section up to, it's in the first section, it's called lift hands to up posture. Ki so song chi. So if we start in Tai Chi harmony, <clears throat> I'll start off here to the side a little bit. 
and we do commencement breathing and then you reach your ready stance we have right grasp the sparrow's tail square step forward left ward off breathing left grasp the sparrow's tail square step forward right ward off roll back press push look left glance right double press <clears throat> horizontal split hook single whip and then from here the arms fall down into place to do this splitting movement and then lock the foot and rolling up the side this is uh, this type of movement is kind of like a paint roller where <clears throat> when you're applying the pressure even if the wall is horizontally you apply the pressure this way the paint's going to roll right uh, unless there's a little bit of down angle it will roll down but in this particular case if you took a paint roller and pushed it against the wall when the wheel hits it's going to start rolling <clears throat> so this also is a push from close quarters which uh, the opponent is very close to us so we can use this round egg-like structure to form a, a barrier between us and the opponent and so the movement has a rolling there's uh, this could be expanded upon quite a bit because if you see all these if you look at your wrist you have all these little bumps and bones and stuff this the same thing when you run all of those bumps over the surface of someone else's skin can be very painful and even if it's not painful if I run that little nub at the, on the edge of my wrist there on somebody's ribs it's not painful but it's it can be very distracting right uh, can feel uncomfortable in a way that causes the opponent to think about it. And once their thought is divided, we have access to, to everything we need. So step up to seven stars from hook, corner whip. The second snake creeps down <clears throat> is identical. I, would, I might go so far as to say the first one is offensive, the second one is more defensive. What's the difference? Offensive is I'm attacking going in. I want, I want to shoot for that ankle. Like a wrestler, they shoot in for something. Here, I'm getting out of the way of the weapon or the danger, and I'm shooting in to get to the thing. <clears throat> uh, as opposed to defensive, which is the opponent has attacked, right? I've already done the thing. They're attacking, and I'm leading them away, right? One is offensive going in. The other is defensive coming out. This is my uh, basic. Of, because in the form... <clears throat> the only difference is how they end. These two postures are identical. So, uh, step up to seven stars. Now, when I turn back to the west, I'm going to be facing due west, square step up. <clears throat> so we end with right foot forward. By the way, we had a question several months ago. <laughs> it was when we were still at this location. Uh, they said, which hand is on the inside? And it's not important, but for this particular, once I do snake creeps down, when I step up, I'm keeping my right hand on the outside. Let's, let's practice it three times. So from hook, I'm facing north. I'm going to do corner whip. I'm facing west. My square is facing due west. Snake creeps down. I turn my square again. I'm facing north, and now when I turn, I turn this foot first, I'm going to use that as my balance point to step up to seven stars. This one, by the way, the same thing with the footwork. If the footwork is too big, right, we like to make a fancy big performance for snake creeps down. So if I make my snake creeping all the way down here, I have to make a big change to get it up there. So make sure that you have the right and the way to determine that is practice. And you may also need to practice strengthening 
good leg. <coughs> no injuries. Don't have an injury. Where were we? Hook. Corner whip. Snake creeps down. Step up to seven stars. Should feel very natural. It's a very natural type position. And again, this step up to seven stars can be a block. It should be uh, at least at your face level. If you're blocking something higher, you need to, to raise it up. Raising it up starts to make an exposure. So there's a limit to what we can block up here. This is dangerous because I'm open. Things can hit me. Uh, the next one is challenging, and we're going to spend some time in this class, and we'll probably revisit it next week, because huh, the application doesn't look anything like the posture, and the posture is a tricky one. So, let's start. This one is called Schwansen Kwahu, and uh, Schwansen is the same as when we have, when we turn from the first to second section. That's called Schwansen Kwahu. So Schwansen, in this, my attempt at Mandarin, <coughs> means turning body. Schwan is the turning, Sen is the, the body. And the term Kwahu, in this case, translates to uh, ride a tiger, mount a tiger. I do not know, my Mandarin is not good enough to know, <coughs> if the term Kwa is the same when we say fold the insides of your hips. In the Mandarin language, they call that this inside part here. Actually, a better part of the pelvic structure, they call it the qua. We might say hips, but it's as if they were combined, right? So like this, like if you had a large shoebox sized area here, that's your qua, right? Where your hips and the legs connect up to it in this joint here. So, qua hu, I don't know if that refers to this, but it means basically, in short, ride a tiger. Uh, the direct translation may be mount a tiger. So we're coming from, uh-oh, my assistant has maybe had enough class for the day. We'll see what happens, right? So, uh, <clears throat> went from, ride, or from uh, lift hands to up posture. From here, I'm stepping back and my opponent is gonna be to the north. And so the first thing I want to do is get my foot and adjust it to be facing north, right? <clears throat> so if I'm here, I'm turning just like this. So if we forget the hands, from step up to seven stars, turning, step to here. And then the other foot just simply returns also to the side. If we were to indicate which one is yin and yang, the left one would be on its toe, right? Or we don't disconnect from the ground in this one. So here, forgetting the hands, stepping back, and then replacing the other foot next to it. So the main portion of this posture, just like hook and whip, our body is vertical. What happens with the hands? Let's do one at a time. So from this corner, <clears throat> stepping up to seven stars. My right foot is going to step back. My right hand is going to make a full circle and come back around as if I'm drinking a beverage. So let's look. Full circle, coming back around here. <clears throat> let's hang in there. Because this one, we're going to look at it a couple different ways. So the right hand going level, staying level this way. Just the same way we do this one, there's a point in Kwahu where both hands level. So from here, my right hand is going to go level, making a circle, and then come back up this way. This one is, this one is challenging to teach in person. I don't know that even 3D would help it. It requires a little bit of effort. So I avoid, I make contact, and I advance. The end result for this posture, by the way, let's talk about that because you can at least practice that without knowing very specifically how to get into it, and it will reveal itself later. <clears throat> Kwahu is the hands, the first hand is like this. It's a unique one, and I don't, uh, 
I've not seen a name for it, but I refer to this as snake bite fingers because TC would talk about this like the fangs of a snake. And the bottom half is if you're holding something, right? So, and the example that TC used was a glass of wine. And he would say the, the bottom of the wine glass is smaller. So you're holding that here, but it's a big glass of wine, like one of those, those big goblets. So you hold it and you have to have enough space at the top to do the thing. Right, so <clears throat> that's the front hand. The back hand is a beak fist, but it's real weird. It's pointing up and directly to the center this way. <clears throat> Almost like you, I can't see it on camera. Almost like you have a tail and it goes above the, the tailbone here. Right, so this is, this would be the thing. Now, this is for where the, the form matches the application. This posture is the furthest one away. The, the posture that we do when we do step up to seven stars, when I turn, is very conservative because the, the application that I use for this looks different. And uh, I was taught two applications. Gene taught one. And TC taught one and I like TC's much better and for the application I'm using this as such right this turning the moving of the arms and what's happening uh, we'll break it down we'll analyze what that is let's practice three times oh we didn't talk about the left hand how does the left hand get back here we talked about how the right hand gets up to holding the wine glass. You can leave the hands open. You don't have to focus on some weird posture, right? So from here, the right hand goes level and then circles back up. The left hand the same. It also goes level. But now it's gonna make this crazy Kaiji J-hook <clears throat> shape. So if, I'm, if we're looking from the front, when I turn, this hand goes out in front, out again, and then back up. So it comes across in front, goes out, and then hooks back up this way. This is a weird one. Let's do, let's do both the hands, just standing still. I'll face the other direction so you can see. From step up to seven stars, I put them out to the side <clears throat> one goes down, one goes up, and then one goes forward and one goes back. This, this one, you just have to practice a few times. Starting from step up to seven stars, very confusing. <clears throat> Open, close. So from here, this is the most basic. <clears throat> this is one actually that I have been wanting to build in three dimensions because I suspect if you do it correctly, these two shapes form a three-dimensional kaiji. This first part of the sphere goes here and the second part of the sphere goes here. So if you can imagine a, a kaiji symbol, the paisleys, but they're not just two-dimensional teardrop shapes, they're three-dimensional, right? We would trace those three-dimensional. I have to build it in 3D. I have to actually do this <clears throat> posture with motion capture to see that shape. But I suspect we see a Tai Chi. You should have the Tai Chi symbol in your mind anyway. So from lift hands to up, step up to seven stars, we're going to turn 90 and Kwahu. <clears throat> what is the application of it? Uh, may help you process how to do the form. If power is coming from my side and I've stepped up to seven stars, uh, perhaps it's coming up and in this way because here I'm covered, <clears throat> here is open. So when I'm doing this, I have one chance to block here. And this other hand coming up to block in front of the face and this hand returning to strike. So what is the movement? The avoid is the step back. 
The main contact can be anywhere with either hand, but I'm assuming right hand is going to catch and the left hand is going to go underneath. Once again, this one is uh, the application looks very different. Do you have do a question? I, saw, I see an error message coming up saying the call. We have about 10 minutes left. <clears throat> let's do the let's do it slow, like the Tai Chi, three times, and then we'll come back and see if we can practice a little bit faster for application. So from here, step back, turn 90 degrees. The arm circle, quaffle. Step up to seven stars. Turn, 90 degrees. My arms are almost both out horizontally to the side. Turning, quaffle. If you can get that first part from up to the side, one in front, one in back, you'll be very close. Side. Quahu. Facing west, turn, quahu. Let's go one more time. This one also very similar to the, the body dynamics what we talked about earlier, snake flashing its tongue. If you can get this type of free floating movement engaged in your movement, engaged in your form when you practice, if you do that, by the way, don't leave your fingers loose, you'll break the knuckle, keep it. Spear fist should have power, right? I'm being lazy teaching, teaching class, right? <clears throat> so uh, snake flashing its tongue has the same feeling. If I just stand here and turn, what if we just did this? Weak. So we have to open, then close. Right, there's a back and forth. This is, uh, by the way, this one you will know when you get it if, you, if the body dynamics are there. When you feel the power moving through and you feel you can control. The same thing uh, with snake flashes its tongue. Uh, wait, where, where does snake flash its tongue appear? Oh, from hook, corner whip. Here, you should be able to feel like you can hook the entire opponent with this hand and reach your power back through the center. So this feeling will feel correct. Let's go from step up to seven stars to the end of the form a few times and then we'll call that good. So we step up to seven stars. We're going to turn 90 degrees for Quahu. <clears throat> T-step or Kobu. The hands form a net. We're going to turn those. Kick. Step back. Open the bow to shoot a tiger. Block, punch, kick. Lan. Shui. Let's do the same thing. Right foot forward. Step up to seven stars. Turning 90 degrees. This is Quahu. Turning 180 degrees. This is Bailian. Open the bow to shoot a tiger. Block, punch, kick. Lan. Shui. Change step. Step up to seven stars. Turn 90 degrees to the north for Quahu. Turn 180 degrees south. Bailian. One bump circles. Open the bow to shoot. Tiger block. Punch kick. Lan. <clears throat> One more time. Right foot forward. Step up to seven stars. Turn 90 to the front. Quahu. 180 to the back, Bailian. Shooting straight south, open the bow to shoot an arrow, block, punch, kick, long, shui, roof home. <clears throat> Anyone have questions, thoughts, comments before we close?
Okay. Uh, let's do some Qigong to close. <clears throat> How many feel warm? You feel like by moving around, you have some Qi moving in your body. Good. For the Qigong, take a nice, comfortable stance, breathing deep. You can make it a stretch, but you've already been working. And the same thing, put some intention in your mind. Have some idea. Can you remember to remember to sit down before you travel? Can you remember to remember to charge up before you do the thing? Can you remember to have a half smile? <clears throat> I am a human being, so I make mistakes. I'm not a uh, some mystical Buddha off into the clouds. <clears throat> Do you have a half smile? Do you ever catch yourself during the week between classes, checking to see if you have a half smile and realizing that you don't? <clears throat> That's a good place to be. And if you're not there yet, just start reminding yourself because when you're sitting there working at the desk, you get a very serious expression on your face. You don't realize it. You're concentrated. You can have the same concentration and achieve the same amount of work having fun. And half smile is a fake it till you make it practice. It works. Do two more, make it the longest, deepest breaths of the day. When you finish, bring your feet back together and return to Tai Chi Harmony. Move your mind into your navel into your belly button, thumb tien. And looking inwards towards yourself, breathing deep, take a second to have a gratitude practice to yourself, to someone, something outside of yourself, for yourself. And while you're in there, imagine all of the energy, all of the vibrations, all of the things that you heard today all the concepts settling into the center they're there in the memory bank <clears throat> move your mind up into the center of your heart chakra and the same thing take a deep breath take a second to smile at your heart and internally <clears throat> have a gratitude practice to your heart, for your heart. With another long, deep breath, move your mind up into the center of your brain, third eye. And the same thing, breathing deep, imagine that you can relax your brain. Imagine the material that comprises your brain can relax and expand like a sponge, becoming just slightly larger when it gets wet. The same thing. Relax your brain. Smiling to your brain on the inside, the same thing. Have a gratitude practice. You can have gratitude for having a brain capable of learning Tai Chi over many months, years. <clears throat> you can have gratitude to your parents for giving you such an extraordinary genetic combination to have the brain you have. Thanks going outside, thanks going inside, whatever you like. And then move your mind one more time further away. You can make it a moving camera or you could just see yourself from a static position, but see yourself from as far away as you can. How would you look if you saw yourself from the sky, from the moon, from a planet, even further away. And while you're out there looking at yourself, take a second to have a gratitude practice. Give thanks. Take a long, deep breath. And then <clears throat> bring everything back to the center. Bring your mind's eye, 
all your attention, your focus back to the Dantian. And imagine before you open your eyes or come out of meditation that you're going to lock that off. So you flip the switch, take a long, deep breath, <clears throat> and that's it. Call, write, text with questions. Uh, I did see a question come in via email, and I will answer that probably via email or maybe text, something like that. So have a great weekend. Thanks, guys.